I'm going to show you how to make some basic fiction covers in Photoshop using um, just a few simple images. And I've written a blog post re recently about about um, why it's better to use simple pictures rather than try to develop a whole scene. In Photoshop, you can do a lot of Photoshop editing and you can add a lot of things and images and change colors, but you really don't want to do all of that. Um, you want to keep it really simple and just use a few photographs. So if we're going to start off making, and we're just doing a simple ebook cover, we're not doing a full print cover yet. If you don't know how to use Photoshop, this isn't a total crash course in Photoshop because Photoshop is a huge program. There's thousands of different options. I'm just going to show you the basics of what I use to make fiction covers. And if you need more help kind of learning how to use Photoshop, I'd recommend lynda.com or just watching some YouTube videos to find specific things that you need to learn how to do or different tools to use. For starting off, we're just going to go for new and if you want to make an ebook cover, I always start with 6 by 9 at 300 dpi. That's uh, 100, 1,800 pics wide and 2,700 long. Um, that's a kind of average size these days. It's fine for Kindle. Kindle actually recommends something larger now, but that's because they have these huge um, screen resolutions with 600 dpi. And so they want you to make something much bigger, but then it's not going to work very well on most other platforms. And if you're trying to use it for like your blog or online things, it's going to be too big to use. This is a kind of a decent size that'll make something um, that you can use for Kindle and other ebook sites. It's going to be years until they need something with a higher resolution. And so I would start with that. This is um, the ratio that this makes is this, which is about a book cover size. It's a it's a size that I like. What Amazon also recommends is something a little bit thinner. They want you to do a 5x8 cover, which has a different ratio and just a little bit narrow. It's fine if you prefer it. Um, it doesn't really matter. Ebook readers, they're all going to display no matter what size you choose. If you have art that's taller and you don't want to cut anything off, you may want to use this size. But one of the drawbacks is because there's only so much height that'll be shown on a on a any screen size. So when you go narrow like this, most screen sizes like the Kindle or the iPad, they're actually more like this. So you're going to fit more of the book cover into the screen if you use this size. And this was just six by nine inches. And so I'm going to be going back and referring to this blog post that I'm working on so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And I'm using some examples. So the first one is just find a picture and keep it. And this is just a, a simple picture with nice text, nothing fancy, but it works for the genre. That's going to work well for memoir, historical fiction, literary fiction, self-help, spiritual, possibly some romance. Um, a lot of mainstream romance you want a couple, and for paranormal romance you want something fancier. But for a lot of simpler genres, a, a plain picture is going to work really well. Even most of the best-selling books in the last couple of years have had just one simple picture with no details. And that's because mostly they're literary fiction, so the cover isn't as important. And like I said before, if you're doing mainstream pulp fiction, you need a cover that really does its job and works to convert the right kind of readers. But it doesn't necessarily mean you need to have a very complicated scene. And what you really want to avoid is focusing on the details rather than the effect or the mood. And so I'm not going to worry about um, another example in this post. This is the Fallen cover, which is a really great cover. Um, but it doesn't really match the book as well as you would think it does. I mean, it in the cover, in the book, she's got short hair and she's modern, so she's wearing modern clothes. Um, and the background setting would be a school or a cemetery. If I was really, like if someone had given me that project, I may have tried to hit more of the points of the book than make it specific. And that would have been a mistake because this cover is so much stronger, even though it doesn't really fit the book, it really appeals to the right readers and it's really beautiful and that's going to work so much better than a cover that had 
been really specific about all the details. So I'm just going to start and throw some, these are some pictures I grabbed from stock photography sites and I'm going to throw some into my canvas here in Photoshop. And I'm first just going to start with a one picture cover. So I would just take a picture and make it fill the screen. And I'm going to do a few different genres at the same time. So I'll do one of those in one of these. And if you wanted to, um, for example, if I didn't like cutting all this scene off, I could make this smaller and then I could fill this bottom with um, a color, a gradient. And since it's already so dark down there, I could just make it black and then just cover it up like that. So I am going really fast. I'm not really showing you how to use the tools, but um, this isn't a beginning course to Photoshop. This is just how to make covers in Photoshop. So I could do something like that, which gives me more space for the title text down here, which is probably a good idea. Um, and I'll take one more. You can just find a nice picture with a character already. And there's nothing wrong with doing that if it's a really beautiful picture, except that you're probably gonna find other people have used the same picture before. But in a lot of cases, that doesn't really matter because there's so many books on Kindle, unless they're in the exact same genre and unless they're selling about the same that you're selling, you're not gonna see your cover right next to other people's covers. Um, however, it's usually better if you have a picture that has a character in it, not to just use it as is. If I could change the background or change the color of the dress or just a little bit to make it look like I made some effort, um, but you don't want to customize everything. Like it would be a mistake to try to change your clothes and change your hair because the more you change, um, the less realistic it's going to be. And then as far as genres go, you're mostly going to use your fonts to dictate or to tell the reader what kind of genre it is. And this would be a self-help or spiritual book. It could be a novel because as a character. Um, I'm just going to write... This is big noodle tilting, but that's actually uh, better for a sci-fi or technology thriller or something. But because I'm making simple, I'm, this first round is just really simple covers using pictures only. So I'm going to keep with simple text also. And I'm just keeping a simple title. And I'd probably want to make that a bit bigger. Because this would be a self-help or spiritual, I'm going to want to leave a lot of empty space. You don't want it to feel too crowded. And if I wanted to match the color of her dress a bit, which is probably a good idea, then I could just do something like this and pick up that red. The red's a little bit eye-catching, but it also it, it matches the dress, which is probably a good idea. Um, but if you have the same colors, it's also going to kind of draw away from the dress because it catches your attention and you don't want too many things on the cover fighting for attention. You kind of want everything to, there's an order to where your eye looks and you have to decide whether you want the dress to be the most eye catching or if you want the text to be the most eye catching. But I could do something like that. And this is um, something that would make a decent cover because it's a really strong image, even if I don't do anything with the text or I keep it really simple. Oops. My Photoshop's going haywire on me. So I could do something like that. And um, 
this cover basically is done. I could add more to it, but I probably wouldn't because the image is so strong. I really just want to get out of the way of the image and let it, suit, let it do its job. With text, here the text I think is good enough. You might want to darken the bottom a little bit so the text stands out more. You could either add a drop shadow by going layer, layer style, drop shadow. But if you do that, you want a really wide drop shadow. You don't want something like like this, where you can see the drop shadow, you want it to be almost, like it's still there, so it makes the text stand out a little bit more, but you don't want it to be obvious. So I go like that, and now I have this little bit of a drop shadow that makes the title, the author name stand out a little more, and that's probably enough. I could do the same thing up here with the title, if I go layer, layer style, but I go outer glow. And I would do the same thing. I don't want it to be something really strong like this. I want it to just be unnoticeable so that the text stands out a little bit more, but it's not obvious enough that you can see that there's an outer glow or an effect around the text. It's just a little bit there. And I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger actually. And if I wanted, I could add a tiny bit of, you know, decoration or design or some lines or something, but um, I probably wouldn't. And the problem with this cover right now is that because it's a, because it's a nonfiction, the most important thing besides the, the picture is going to be um, the subtitle with the keywords. And so if you just had a book cover like this, it's going to fail, even though the cover is, the picture is really beautiful, you need the keywords for anybody to find it. And so you really need a better title and a better subtitle with something like um, 59 simple ways to live a better life, improve your relationships. I mean, a lot of specific benefits. And that's you're going to need that for any nonfiction. But you're going to want to make sure that you don't screw up the title that you're already working on or the art. So I'd probably put it down here. And I'd make it pretty small and then I'd make it italic. And then I could do something like 't a great subtitle but it's um it's something anyway and just to show you where it might fit I was thinking about putting it down in this area so that I don't go over her dress but you could actually do it that way in the center and it would be fine when you're testing things out if you're not sure but you have something that looks kind of good and you want to try something else you can go to right click and then duplicate layer because otherwise if you try to go backwards all the time, you, once you make changes, if you're experimenting with other things, you want to go back, it's going to be hard. But if I duplicate this layer, then I can change one of these layers. And if I don't like it, I can just use the other layer. So I could also do something like this with the subtitle, and that's more like a magazine style. And that's probably what I would use, actually. So that's one idea for one cover. Um, and I'm going to stop this video here because I'm, I'm already way on time, but I'll make another one right after this.